Hello everyone, I'm Tracy and thank you for being here today. So I'm, I'm making this video to address the many questions and concerns about my more recent videos, mainly about the recordings that I release and some of the comments I made. Another question that I got, and I have a lot of new subscribers and viewers, so um, welcome. And I wanna explain why John Pelletier is such an important character. Um, in this tragedy and mainly because when the fire was raging through Lahaina, there were roadblocks. So the police officers were blocking people in from getting out. And that led to a lot of people losing their lives. A lot of people either got out of their car, jumped in the water and didn't survive, or they stayed in their car and lost their life that way. And there are many uh, witnesses that saw saw both of these instances. So that is why looking at the highest ranking police officer is very important. You know, we want to get to the bottom of why those orders were given and why things were done the way they were. So um, I did want to clear that up. I know a lot of you guys know, but if you're newer, it might not be so clear. I do want to explain the comment I made about Pelletier being a good communicator and saying that he wasn't as aggressive as maybe I thought or you know something along those lines. I have not done a 180. I have not been compromised. I'm not blackmailed or bribed. I, I try to make this channel a very fair and balanced channel. I'm trying, I'm not trying to convince you guys to see things my way. I'm trying to provide as much evidence and my observations and my opinions in a balanced way. And that is something I noticed. And it might also be because my expectations for what Chief Pelletier is like in a meeting was the expe expectation was very low because I had read the complaints that he had gotten and uh, heard about him yelling and cursing at people and you know making women cry in their car so i had a very very um very negative expectation of what he was going to be like in a meeting and when i heard what he said it wasn't as bad as i thought it doesn't mean that i am a pro um pelletier advocate or anything i just try to provide a more balanced um presentation of the people I talk about, especially someone like him. The question I've been getting for some time is why is Chief Pelletier still the county coroner as well as the chief? And so that's not supposed to be the case because it's a conflict of interest. But when looking at how things were changed around when he came to the department, he took out the head of internal affairs in Maui and his name was Ricky Oidoi. He sent him to Molokai and Ricky ended up retiring early because that assignment was a huge demotion. And so when the question in the meeting was asked who was going to take his place, they said that Captain Keola Tom was gonna to take his place. However, he was going, to, uh, Captain Tom was gonna to be going to the FBI in a month so that position would have been vacant and Deputy Hank did say he was going to oversee that position. And right now, um, actually, Charles Hank is no longer the deputy. And if you go on to the department site, it is not um, internal affairs has not been. Um, it's still a vacant position. So there is no one there to launch a proper investigation into Chief Pelletier. And I believe that was set in motion back when he came to the department. And that is why there is not a lot of oversight going on right now. Another question is why isn't the sheriff doing something? Because the sheriff does usually have the power to take out the police chief. But in Hawaii, they do things a little differently because the um, police chief and the sheriff are not elected officials. So they are appointed and the police commission decides who the police chief is and the, I don't know if it's the police commission, but the sheriff is also appointed 
meaning that that person is probably under orders of the powers that be. So again, that's why I believe he is still holding those two positions and there has been no official investigation into Chief Pelletier. Okay, so another question I've been getting is, um, have I looked at the Chile fires? And yes, I have. And I do see some similarities. And we're putting together a more detailed video um, pointing out what those are and um, hopefully providing more details and insight into that fire and comparing it to some of the other ones that we see that have these anomalies, the blue items and the metal burned and things like that. So that'll be coming hopefully this next week. Okay, and then another question was, what did Hank mean when he said we caught the knucklehead again with Keiki, Operation Keiki Shield? And so I looked into that and what Operation Keiki Shield was is a sting operation where they were trying to find um, adults that were soliciting um, sex from underage, I guess, children or underage you know, minors. And what happened was they ended up catching one of their own, an ex-MPD officer who was fired previously because he had been harassing a female officer and um, soliciting a sexual favor from someone that he had arrested in exchange for something. So he was fired and then after that he was caught in, in their sting. And this officer, his name was Saffields, that's his last name, he was from the mainland. So when you hear Deputy Hank saying something about the Operation Cakey Shield, um, that is what that was about. So I don't have any more about that but I did want to let you guys know what that was about. And then um, also Hustle Bitch is back. He um, is still with us and he did say he was threatened. He didn't give a lot of specifics, but if you want to hear it from him, he has his return video that went up a few days ago. So go ahead and check that out. And um, it looks like he will be providing more content. So that is exciting. And a relief to know that he is you know still with us and he seems to be you know doing fairly well so he looks a little different but you know he's still alive and well I also want to address the questions about uh, Terry Jones accident and her untimely death so I spoke to um, William Hankins and he was the investigator to her accident and he wants to go on the record and say that that is all it was it was a very unfortunate accident and he sees how the timing does make it look suspicious but he saw everything he looked into everything he knows the scene better than anyone and he did say that she was going too fast and when she hit that turn her car hit the tree and that's um, how she lost her life. I also got some feedback from Clyde when I did an interview with him he did accidentally say that she went through the windshield but then he kind of went back and um, also the windshield doesn't look like anything came you know was coming out but he said that he just forgot about the details and he wasn't in the investigation of that accident so he did want to clear that up. More information that I found out about Terry Jones's death is that she was not with her daughter at the time of the theft. She was taking a nap in her car and that's when someone stole her purse and then a chase ensued. We know this because she was on the phone with dispatch at this time including the moment of her accident. So that is confirmed and I've confirmed it by um, from two sources that are very close to the investigation. Two men were arrested about a week later, the ones that stole her purse. So yeah, that is the gist of what I wanted to address. So, um, and I think, yeah, I think that's gonna do it. So thank you guys so much for the overwhelming response to the previous four 
videos about the secretly recorded meetings. Um, I was a little nervous releasing them, but I'm really glad that I did. And hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how things were done behind the scenes at the department. So um, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for the support. So um, I will see you guys soon. Bye.